mankind and everlasting master we thank you because of this day it is indeed another day that lord we yearn to commune from this a bread of today it is a it is our prayer that lord even as we are listening to what you have for us that you allow the holy spirit to journey with us through as we start the service we invite your presence to be with us until the end we pray trusting through Christ our lord amen so allow me welcome brother darius to take up from there welcome brother darius karim all right good evening everyone i hope you are well i just have a question how many minutes do i have Um, is, is, there, is anyone going to respond? <laughs> Hello, Darius. Yes. Okay, let me respond. I think maybe he's not in a position. You are to present for 15 minutes, then the speaker to speak for 45 minutes. So you are to present between 8 and 8.15. Right. It's, already, it's already 8.10. So maybe you can give you, you can do 10 minutes between now and 8.20. All right, thank you. So I'm going to play two hymns or uh, three if time allows. The first one is Blessed Assurance and the next one will be There is Singing Up in Heaven Such as We Have Never Known. Blessed Assurance, I think it's hymn number 462 in the hymnal. And um, There is Singing Up in Heaven, I think it's hymn number 425 in the Seventh Day Adventist hymnal, may we be blessed.
Amen. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, may God bless you, uh, Brother Darius, for the wonderful hymns. Uh, at this time, as I already say, those who have just joined us uh, feel much welcome. Uh, we are happy to be joined together uh, that we may all uh, share what is in the uh, what is on the table today together. So at this time, uh, let me uh, pray after the, uh, the the session that has just ended and uh, after that we shall be inviting the speaker to take, uh, to take over from that for the next 40 minutes. Um, let us pray once again. Our dear Heavenly Master, uh, thank you because of this day. Thank you because of this far. And we thank you because of the session that has just ended. We thank you for the wonderful hymns that have been praised. We pray that, Lord, even as we continue with the next session, as the minister takes the floor to minister to thy flock, we pray that you may have we may have an ear that is open enough and lord that we'll be able to hear the message that is brought to us tonight we also pray that lord you may prepare our hearts that we may take the same and also reach those who are also hungering for the same thank you lord for being with us continue being part of us even as we get to hear from you through today's minister. It is our humble plea in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, let us all feel welcome, even as we get to hear from the speaker. I can mm -hmm. see she is in. I uh, will uh, uh, straight away welcome her. Uh, she, uh, our speaker, I can see you in kindly. You are welcome. You can greet us and maybe and uh, take up from there. Welcome. Um, good evening. Um, kindly confirm that you can hear me clearly. Yeah, you are audible. Actually, thank you. I hope that you can hear me and I think you can also see me. Yeah, so um, I'm really glad to be here tonight. Um, the music, I've joined a bit late. Um, I think there's a problem with my beat, but the music was amazing for the first that I got to join for. And um, I've also been really held up. I've been unable to join the previous sessions, but it is my prayer, and I have been praying for this particular meeting. And it is my prayer that um, so far we have been blessed with the various presentations that we have had. The topics were really amazing. I got to so to to see to go through the list, and um, it is my prayer that God has really blessed. So I'd like to pray and get into the session. I'd like to welcome you all. Um, yeah, and kindly pray with me so that um, the Lord himself may speak to us. Yeah, we are not here to hear the words of men, but the words of God, only that can save. Yeah, so... Oh, 
forgot to introduce myself. My name is Daisy Nyarangi. Yeah. Um, we will pray now. Let's see. Our dear Father, here in heaven, Lord, we thank you that you call us to hear from you. I pray that in us, in every single person who is under the sound of this voice, including myself, that you may give us a desire to know more about you and to know you for who you really are. You desire to speak to us through your word right here, right now. It is my prayer that through all the words that I am going to say, through all the verses that we are going to read, that Lord Jesus himself may be lifted up, that he may draw all men to himself, and that in looking, we may live. This is my prayer, and I trust that you will help it to be our experience, because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. So, um, today we are to be covering um, the topic of the saving power of music. And now I have to admit that this this was quite... Um, I think I I I overrated the I underrated the, the the significance of this topic and it has been heavy on my heart. I have been praying continuously that the Lord um the Lord gives me something to, to share tonight and that it may not be just um mere words, but that he himself may actually speak to us and that he may not just speak to us to our ears, but he may speak to our hearts and that our our lives may be transformed. Um, God is a powerful God and he intends to he intends to speak to his children in and to and to and to have us experience him in ways that actually change our lives. And that is that is what is my prayer today, that in meeting God, because I believe that if we meet God and see God for who we really who He really is, um, we will surely be changed. The Bible does say that um by beholding we will become changed. So the saving power of music. Now our key text is in Romans. Romans chapter one, verse sixteen. Yeah. And these are the words of Paul himself. And um, he's talking about power. You know, power is a very, it's a very interesting topic because so many of us, I think it is even inherent in human beings to desire power. And I believe that it is why when God created man, he gave man dominion. But here today we are talking about a different kind of power. It is not just power to rule over people. It is not just power to do certain things, um, like the things that our politicians can do. It is saving power. Um, that is power unto salvation. And I'd like to read Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And I would like you to follow with me in your Bibles. And I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, that for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The word of God is saying that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Now, as you're going to look at the saving power of music, I'd like you to realize that we're not just merely going to to um, look at the nitty gritties of what music involves and look at um, the particular um, things like notes and melodies and harmonies. But I desire to draw to you a picture of how God intends to use music to actually save human beings. And it is my prayer that we will be blessed. Our story is based on Joshua, um, Joshua chapter 6. And we will be reading from verse 1 to verse 5. Now, this is the context in which Joshua is still quite a new leader after the death of Moses. It is only verse 6. Moses died um, earlier in, De um, in Deuteronomy 
as Deuteronomy was ending. And they have crossed um, the Jordan. They have entered um, the first place that they are meant to conquer, which is Jericho. And it is very apparent that this, okay, we will read and then we will see how it becomes very apparent that it is, it is inevitable that these guys are going to lose if some supernatural power does not intervene. And um, we will relate this to our study. You will find it very interesting. Now, excuse me, Daisy. I will read. Yes. Would, would you mind to, to turn your, your gadget? It is giving you, in a talk, you are inverted and we are live on YouTube so that it is, uh, you can turn it. Turn it how? Like you have put it horizontal now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Better. better now. Okay, okay nice. sorry for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope this is going to start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yes, I was about to read Joshua chapter six from verse one to five. That is um, where our our text is coming from tonight. So I will read. Um, it is my prayer that you will follow with me from your versions. Um, Joshua chapter six, verse one to five. It says. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city. Thus shalt thou do six days. Verse 4. And seven priests shall bear before the before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpet. Verse five. And it came to pass that when they make a lo and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him now um that that was from the king james version but i'd like to read my niv so that you understand um what verse one is actually um what verse one in chapter six is actually saying it says that um now the gates of jericho were securely barred because of the israel is israelites no one went out and no one came in that the the gates of the city or the walls of the city had been had been locked up and no one was coming in or going out why because of the israelites and you will read later when you go to the story of rehab that the the people in jericho had had that the israelites were mighty they had had how they had um, they had gone through the, the desert, the people that they had conquered, and I am sure that their hearts were trembling. And that is why verse 1 is saying that now the, the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. And um, it's very interesting when you go and read um, the, the nitty gritties of how the walls of Jericho were built, but they were built in a way that it became very up apparent to the Israelites that it was impossible for them to be able to overcome. In fact, um, God tells them that they should, um, they should walk around the city for six days. And I believe that this is God's way of ensuring that these people actually realize that there is no way that we can overcome if God does not come through. And it is so amazing that we have a God like ours because before these things come to pass, he actually tells us that they should not have sunk in despair. Why? Because before they started the whole process of surrounding Jericho, of walking around Jericho for the six days, and that their heart should not sink in despair, God appears to Joshua first when you read the last few verses of chapter 5 in Joshua, and he 
he tells him that he appears to Joshua and he tells him you're standing on holy ground and he tells Joshua in in the first verses of chapter 6 that you know what um i have i have given this city to you um you're probably wondering how what does this have to do with music and its saving power but please track with me now um you i read the king james version as well because you realize that it does not just merely say that the trumpet was going to be blown to be to be blown it says that the there were ram's horns in essence what these ram's horns were were, were in other terms called shofars and when they would blow it was the, only the priests who had the jurisdiction to blow these trumpets and this not not really trumpets but this ram's horns because you see there um, in verse 4 it says that and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns and when you when you look carefully um even um in history you will find that when this when this um particular horns were being blown they were not merely for battle they were not merely for any other use but that to call the presence of god and um you will also realize in the text that particular directions were given on how the ram's horns or the trumpets were to be blown and when they were to be blown god i am learning lately that he is very particular in worship and in how his children are to carry out worship and you guys probably know that quote that says that as it pertains to our our services music is as much an act of worship as is prayer and it is very sad when i when i sit in congregations and i hear people say that you know as long as we are all worshiping god we can all do what we want but god here is seen to be giving very particular directions on how horns are to be blown and when they are to be blown but that is not the point of my of my reading um the point number one that i would like us to know coming back to our topic the saving power of music is that salvation is a god thing guys salvation is a god thing and what i mean by that is that salvation is something that god accomplishes for man it is that we cannot save ourselves that god has to intervene if if the sinner never sees the need for if if the sinner never feels the need that they that they like what i'm trying to say is that the sinner has to feel the need for a savior and by that god has to show you that in fact you are weak you cannot save yourself and you realize that in the process of the israelites surrounding jericho and they see their need for god they see the need that god god needs to intervene and i praise god for those times that he allows us to see our weakness and he allows us to see how much we need him that we may know that we cannot save ourselves so even as we're looking at the power of music the first point i'd like to, us to keep in mind is that saving power is not human power salvation is a god thing but you know it is very interesting and humbling at the same time that though salvation is a god thing um god in his wisdom you know has chosen man and qualified them that through sinful mortal men he is able to use them to accomplish the salvation of their fellow men and um you will prove that salvation is a god thing through um the the verse we have just read in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 that i am not ashamed of the gospel why because the gospel is the power of god unto salvation the gospel in essence is the good news about jesus christ and that is the power that god uses to save men it is nothing that human beings do so it it should make your mind click immediately to the kind of music that we listen to if if god is not involved in it then it cannot be saving if our music 
we cannot find God in it. There's a song that says that when in our music, God is glorified. If God cannot be found in our music, it has no saving power. But um, back to my point, that God is willing to, to use mortal men who are sinful and urging to save other men, to save our fellow men. And it is not that it is not that men now save other men. It is God working through other men to save. And um, God does this by endowing men with um, with blessings, with spiritual gifts, to enable them to to do things like preaching. We know those things are are of God. And I'd like us to read Ephesians chapter one, verse three, as we are building up on this. Um, where we will see that um, that it is God who gives us these blessings that we are able to to use. So Ephesians chapter one, um, verse verse um, verse three. Ephesians chapter one verse three. The Bible says that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. That it is God that gives us all the spiritual blessings that we have. The, the gift of, of singing and music, the gift of preaching, the gift of um, any, any gift you can think of, it is of God. But then that, that, that verse emphasizes that all these spiritual blessings are given to us in Christ. And you will as well go to James chapter 1, verse 17, and it will tell you that every good and every perfect gift is from, comes, comes from above and from the Father of light. And it, it, should, it should immediately strike you that if you have a lovely voice and you think that this voice is just beautiful, it is perfect, then you should remember that it is coming from God. And God... God's intent in giving us spiritual blessings is that they may be of glory to him. And I want us to realize as well through Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 that God's blessings, the spiritual blessings that God is talking about in verse 3, that they are never given apart from him. God does not give us his blessings apart from himself. It says that um, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. That all the blessings, all the spiritual blessings that we are having are given to us in Christ. In essence, really what that verse is saying, you have Jesus and he comes with all the blessings. That Jesus is the one who is able to give us those blessings, but he cannot give, a, give us blessings without giving us himself first. And if we, are, if, we, if, we, if we have allowed God to work in our hearts, we will actually realize that God giving us himself is the ultimate blessing. You know, when God says to Abraham that I am your shield, and then he says that I am your exceedingly great reward, God is the prize. God is the prize. And all these other things are blessings, but the capital B blessing is God himself. Um, and, and building on this, we are to realize that um, if our music is to be powerful unto salvation, it has to be preceded with the presence of the God with the power. If we want power in our music, because you're talking about the power, the power of music, the power of music to save, the saving power of music, we are to realize that God is not, is not saving men without himself. That um, the power that God intends to give us 
or to to allow to channel through us to save other men is not is not given apart from himself that our music is to first have the presence of god before it can have the power of god and to salvation i don't know whether we are understanding but if we are um we should probably be typing in men that this is how the israelites conquered jericho they conquered jericho not by um having loud shouts of of, of the trumpets they conquered jericho not by stomping their feet so hard that those walls should have come down by the sixth day these guys were surely aware that they could not be able to conquer that city they conquered that city by calling upon the presence of god that is what the trumpets and the ram's horns were for they were not for making a shout loud enough like an earthquake to crack those walls that cannot be attained by the power of those trumpets no it was by them calling upon the presence of god which came with power and brought the walls down this is how the israelites conquered jericho and it similarly will be how we will conquer sin because i believe that when we are talking about the saving power of music what are we being saved for? from we are being saved from the power of sin and and thus the power that we need should be greater than sin and that power is the power of god himself but as i am continually repeating because repetition deepens the impression it is that god gives us himself gives us his presence and his presence comes with power amen that when when you read the bible when you read acts chapter 1 verse 8 jesus tells his disciples that ye shall receive power after that the holy spirit is come upon you that power the power that came with how the 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 disciples preached on that day of pentecost that they were able to convert 3000 men came first with the presence of god through the holy spirit and when the holy spirit came the holy spirit came with the power the promise the promise of god's power is always ever under the premise of his presence i will repeat that statement again that the promise of god's power is always ever under the premise of his presence it is his presence that comes first that we may have his power but it is so sad that men want power aside from god men love the gift more than they love the giver of that gift men will be so quick to sit in a congregation and say amen to a, men want powerful voices but they don't want the god who gives those that powerful voice and if that is our attitude towards music or any part of worship our worship will never have saving power we have removed the savior there can be no saving and the reality as well is that some of us our intent in in music is not salvation it is not unto salvation it is unto the glorification of men it is so sad that our pulpits have become like the modern day tower of babel where people are are trying to make a name for themselves instead of glorifying the name of god and friends the reality of of babel is that it fell and the reality of the glory of man is that as well it will surely it will surely fall now i want to come to the conclusion of this message and I want to relate it now very directly with our music. 
and i want to remind you all the times that music has been has been used in the bible in this particular time in jericho when the trumpets and the ram's horns were were um directed to be played you will remember the story of jehoshaphat in second chronicles chapter 20 again the trumpets had to be played and the musicians went there went to battle the, the choir was in front of the army you know and and all all of these times it is not that this 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 musicians were very powerful it is not that they had amazing skills now skill is important but skill is unprofitable and it cannot save without the savior and i want us to realize that in in this very very sense that in this last days um whether symbolic or literal god has ordained men to give the trumpet a certain sound i say symbolic or literal because yes there is an instrument called the trumpet that it should be given a certain sound even as god was particular with um with the with the israelites in jericho he he was particular on how that that ram's horn was to be blown and even up to now god is particular with how we are playing our music but friends the trumpet as well that the pen of inspiration talks about is that men are to give the the trumpet a certain sound in the sense that we are to we are to proclaim the word of god the gospel that is unto salvation with certainty with clarity and with sincerity that god is requiring of men today to give our trumpets a certain sound that through pen voice which may be singing preaching playing and even through any instrument of music that we have and even through our own bodies which are instruments in the hands of god we are to call on god's presence who has the power of salvation just as those musicians not really even musicians just as those priests were using the the horns to call upon god's presence even as today as the bible says that we are we are a royal priesthood we are a holy nation god is requiring that we may give our trumpets a certain sound that through our music god may be glorified through our lives through our actions whatever it may be that god has placed in your hand any spiritual blessing that we are to give god the glory in our music that our our worship is to be calling men to the presence of a saving god the saving power in music is music that invites god's presence that men may look and live I will repeat that statement again. The saving power in music, which is our theme today, is music that invites God's presence that men may look at him and live. Because only God has the power of salvation. I will read the Bible um the very words of Jesus the savior himself in John chapter 12 verse 32 John chapter 12 verse 32 then i will join it with John chapter 3 from verse 14 to verse 15 John chapter 12 verse 32 says Jesus is speaking and he says that and i if i be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me And Jesus here yes he is talking about when he is lifted up on the cross but even today we are to be lifting up the cross and Ellen White says that when Christ and him crucified preached um 
when when Christ and him crucified is talked about is preached is sung she says that it will break and win hearts this is salvation Jesus is saying that where if i am lifted up from the earth i will draw all men unto me then in john chapter 3 verse 14 John chapter 3 verse 14 to 15 it says that and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish Um, Isaiah, okay, yes. Um, sorry, I have been distracted from what I was saying. But the Bible is basically saying that Jesus is to be lifted up. And if he is lifted up, um, and those who see him believe in him, men will live. and i question you today in your practice of music is jesus lifted up you know i have not gone into the details of um how particularly you play your music or you sing i have not gone into that but i believe that when if you are honest in your music and if you pray the holy spirit will convict you because jesus says that the holy spirit convicts men of sin of righteousness and of judgment now i ask that as you as you sing as you minister is your purpose to lift up jesus is your purpose that be is your purpose that you, when when men listen to you or when men see you is it your purpose that they may be saved and if that is your purpose then you need to invite jesus in all that you do because you do not have the power to save men jesus says that he is he is the one to save and friends i finish this sharing with trying to bring us to the realization that we need jesus to be lifted up in our music the presence of god has to precede his power if jesus is involved men will be saved but if we are negligent of inviting the presence of the savior our music cannot have power unto salvation and um like look at the time or oh, yes we have 3 minutes um allow me to um finish with the song we would see jesus it's him 494 and it is my it has been my prayer for the longest time and um i'd like it to be our prayer that any time we are doing music if we if we if we really want our music to have saving power then are we seeing jesus we need to invite him yes so i will do the song him 494 we would see jesus we would see jesus for the shadows lengthen across the little keep on our life we could see jesus our weak faith to strengthen for the last conflict in this mortal strife we would see jesus rock of our 
salvation. Where on our feet rests with sovereign grace, we not life nor death with all their agitation can thence remove us gazing on his face we would see Jesus other lights are paving which for long years we did rejoice to see the blessings of this sinful world of failing we would not mourn them in exchange for thee we would see jesus this is all we're needing strength joy and Jesus says, um, when he is lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. May this be our prayer and our desire. Let us pray. Our good Father in heaven, thank you because it is your desire to save us from the pit that we have fallen of sin. Thank you that you do this in various ways, including music. Lord, it is my prayer that in every single heart that is here, that you may give them a desire to lift up Jesus, that you may give them the intent to see that men are saved. And Lord, that when we are lifting you up in our music, in our worship, that the whole world may be drawn to you and that in looking, men may live, that this gospel of the kingdom may break and win hearts that it may go out to all the world, that the end may come and that we will go home. Lord, I pray that you may impress these words in ways that I cannot do through your spirit in the hearts of your children, and that you may give them a desire to glorify you, that you may give them a longing to love you and to see that your kingdom comes. Lord, as we go to rest, I ask that you may convict us of your message that Jesus is to be our righteousness, that Jesus is all we are needing. I ask this in confidence because I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a lovely night.